Thanks, dead man. I could play unknown. 2058. Okay, we'll play this guy. I'm black again. Well, two blacks in a row. He's online. Never played him before. He's from Peru. Wow. Peru is, I think, doing pretty well in the Olympiad. I think they're, one of their top players is doing incredibly well. Jorge Cori has like a 2,900 plus performance rating. Um, okay, I'm going to play a French. I, I don't know too many lines after knight c3. Uh, let's take, and I'll play the Fort Knox variation with bishop d7. I was showing this to a student the other day as kind of an easy opening to learn because it's just a matter of developing normally and then trying to outplay the opponent later in the middle game. And there's some there is some interesting nuance which I'm going to try and remember starting with bishop c6. And then I think first playing knight d7 to prepare knight f6. And the lines can branch out pretty quickly. But I remember this is like the main position where things can start branching out, depending what white does. I think knight take f6 is a move, and knight g3 is a move. Maybe bishop g5 is a move. I shouldn't just say all the all the moves for my opponent, but I mean if he's watching, I guess he still has to make a decision. So you know, let's play queen take f6. Wow, he plays c3 right away. I was gonna say there is a trap in that position. Which maybe he maybe he's still in prep. Maybe not. He's taken some time. Let's play bishop d6. There's still a trap which exists. But I'll let him play a move first. I will say this is one of the main positions I, I was looking at like the other day. Like this exact position and then the idea of like attacking on the king side with the two bishops combined with the queen. And there might even be some cases where I could castle queen side. There's also some cases where I can just take on f3, have a more positional game, especially if we trade queens. But I don't think there's any rush to take on f3 right away. It's an interesting question also, what does white do here? It's like he's developed. I mean, he should probably develop this bishop, but in terms of long-term plans, I don't see anything immediate for white. Because I'm controlling a lot of key squares. I'm controlling e5 for the time being. My bishops are just... Nice. I guess if I commit to castling queenside, that would give him a very clear plan of like attacking. So I have to be careful what I commit to. I mean, I could castle queenside. I will also say, because it's, it's clear my opponent sees this, um, the trap was if he played bishop g5, that would be a blunder due to bishop take f3 and then black would win material. So it's clear he's not going to go for bishop g5. Rookie one, I think, is very normal move. I'm inclined to play h3 here with idea of g5. And I'm still not sure which way I want to castle. Rookie one doesn't appear to have a threat. Let's play... Um, 
Let's play h6. Patient move. Probably could have played that quicker. Somewhat tense position though. At some point I'll have to make some commitment. Either have to commit to like going for an attack with g5 or commit to taking on f3 or commit to casting queenside. I don't always like to make commitments though. Like I, I usually like to stay flexible and then determine what to play after my opponent makes a commitment. Uh, sometimes you just can't overthink things. Mm. So he's maybe discouraging me from castling. And this is an interesting moment. Like this is kind of what I was waiting for. Cause now I might shift the like shift plans. Cause now okay, b5. Like he could potentially play b5, bishop d5, c4, and then force a trade. Eh, maybe not a bad thing. I'm thinking about taking right away. Expecting queen take, we trade queens, and then I can go for a5. Try and undermine his uh, his pawn. But then he plays b5. And I can play a4, typical move. And c4, hmm. I can also take right away. With maybe the idea that after everything gets traded, I have c6 followed by some later a5. So a couple options. I could also just play g5. And that could... Well, what does g5 accomplish? Because he still provokes me to take on f3. So maybe that doesn't do anything. So I'll probably... Okay, I'll probably end up taking on f3. It's a question of whether... I want to let him play b5 or just take immediately? Not entirely sure. Hmm. Leaning towards taking immediately. Take, take, take. C6. Positional game. Or if I play A5 first, A5, B5 probably just helps white. Okay, let's trade. I like positions. Like if I had perhaps one strength in chess or one type of position I enjoy playing, it's queenless middle games with some imbalances. And here the imbalances are, okay, clearly pawn structure and also, in fact, white has a bishop pair, but maybe my knight can be useful if it comes to d5 at some point. My opponent in the chat saying that we've played before, not in chess, but in drafts. Hmm. Wonder if he's a, a strong drafts player. Haven't played drops in a while. We're gonna have a slow type of game. Unless he wants to like destroy me immediately. I mean, he could go for F4, threatening F5. But then I probably play g6, hold everything together. And someday I might just want to like exploit these pawns. Like play g5 and then get a, a knife to f4. Or a bishop to f4. I'm envisioning, like, if I get a knight to d5, pawn to g5, and play bishop f4, okay, never mind. So my first impression was g6. I guess he could still play f5. 
but then I take and castle queenside. Let's play g6. Because now his pawn is slightly stuck on f4. And it's stuck on a square where both my bishop and my knight can potentially attack it. So the plan is knight f6, knight d5. And this line I think is nice for me because I castle queenside and I'll control, I'll start attacking on the g file. I'll get some initiative. So b5, b5 is interesting. So he wants to maybe at some point play d5. But if I take, does he play d5 immediately? Hmm. And my king's a bit, bit out of play here, a bit misplaced. Um, so I have some idea of uh, of taking. If bishop take, I have a6, it should be okay. And if I take in d5, I can castle queenside. Then he has a choice of which pawn to take. He'd probably take on e6 first. If he takes with rook, I have... I'm thinking knight c5. Yeah, knight c5 would fork the rook and the bishop. And another line, if... So you take b5, d5, castle, queen side, we trade, and then he takes on b5. Again, I have knight c5 defending e6. And then the f file would be half open, so rook f8, and I can start exploiting this pawn. I could just liquidate, but let's go for that. This is casual, so there's no rating points on the line as much as I would like to break 2300. But yeah, he has a decision because d5, it's um, the difference between d5 and bishop take b5, they just lead to two completely different positions. I think, okay, bishop take b5, it's just more comfortable for me. It's very clear a6 and then kick the bishop and then attack along the c-file. d5 is a lot more concrete. But I don't see anything yet that I'm missing. I guess if I was missing something, I wouldn't see it anyway. So that made no sense. Cascade J. I still don't know how to pronounce your name. Cask J, Cask Edge, whatever your name is, thanks for the, the bits. That's a very good sign he's thinking here. It means that like when he played b5, maybe he wasn't entirely clear what the follow-up is. Okay, d5. So do I need to calculate more? Let's just go for this. So, ooh, maybe I can consider knight f5 or knight c5. It's kind of expecting this anyway. One thing I forgot to mention is that after take, and then he takes on g6, I have rook g8, which is good. If yeah, so if he if I take on e6, bishop take g6, rook g8. Rook take e6, I have knight f8, defending and attacking everything. So let's just take here. So I don't think he can take the g pawn. I think that just loses a piece. And he has a choice between which pawns to take. Always nice to give the opponent a choice when they're running low on time. I think knight c5 will come no matter what, unless he does something really unexpected. Advait 3000, or is it Advait? I think it's Advait, right? Thanks for the sub. Um, 
knight c5. So now we both have weak pawns. I mean, these pawns are weak. This pawn is weak. He has two bishops. But I have more centralized pieces, and I'm ready to play rook f8. So this was essentially the line I was calculating before, and just assume rook f8 has some nice pressure buildup. It's nice, because most of his pawns are on dark squares. And <laughs> all of his pawns are isolated, which makes it even better. F4 pawn especially is going to be hard to defend. I wouldn't be surprised if he like, tries to play one of these moves and trades off bishop for knight and then gets an off the color bishop ending, which could very well happen. It could be drawish, but I feel like there's still room to play for a win. Okay, so I can't take on F4 right away. Rook F8 looks logical. And the whole premise is that if he goes for this line, I'm assuming that at some point f2 is going to be, be a major problem for him. Because I'll have either rook take f4 or rook d2. And hopefully that's enough to lead to a decisive advantage. I'm officially out of tea, unfortunately. Blazing Hearts, thanks for the bits and good to see you back. I don't know what he's going to do here. So I feel like the rest of the moves, at least short term, are going to be easy to play for black. Maybe there's some chance he could maybe generate some tactics. Like there's an interesting line, rook a d1, rook take f4, rook take d6, rook take d6, bishop takes c5. He gets two bishops for a rook, but then I have rook d5, and maybe I win something right back. Because if bishop e3, I have rook g4 check. Kind of looks risky though. But I don't see anything wrong with it. Rook take f4. There's a rule. If you don't see anything wrong with it, go for it. And if you miss something, you learn something. Sometimes it's a scary rule to follow. I'm searching for something wrong with rook take f4. Rook take d6, rook take d6, bishop takes c5, rook d5. Everything looks okay. I mean, maybe there's a quiet move? But if he plays a quiet move, b6 will come. Let's do it. Just play the move, hold my breath, hope for the best. Except I'm not holding my breath because I like to breathe. But I like the situation because it's all up to white to like find counterplay. It's all up to me just to play normal moves and win material. And very soon I'll start having attacking resources, and defending resources. He could still go to this opposite color bishop position. We could trade like everything. He wins e6, I win f2. And I still like my chances there. And time is running low. King h1, unexpected. I guess he's just getting ready for rook g4 check. Oh, and, and I guess he's threatening this uh, this line now because after rook d5, bishop e3 would actually be effective. So I should probably play b6. b6. 
kind of weakens the light squares, but it defends the knight. King c7, also a possibility. King c7 could run into rook take d6. So let's play b6. And there's probably a move I can consider coming up, which is this move, rook h4. Don't know if it would work right away. Also, why didn't I consider rook take f2? I guess I was scared of rook take d6. It's probably a reasonable thing to be scared about. But now I'm probably threatening rook take f2. And this king on h1 is safer, but it leaves the pawn undefended. Whoa, that was unexpected. My knight can just capture. And then, whoa, it gets really weird actually. This interesting move. Because if I take, he can take on d6 with the bishop. And then he's threatening my rook, he's also threatening bishop a6 check. Which is pretty uncomfortable. So I might have to like give back the exchange and then grind down rook and knight versus rook and bishop. So if I take, he takes, thinking about just taking and then playing knight c7. Not too many other options. Take, take. Oh, wait a minute, the thing is pinned, so I just have king b7. And king b7 could be a simple move here. And I don't have to even worry about bishop a6. I'm going to play quicker because I think things are under control and he's low on time. I'm just up the exchange. <laughs> my opponent my opponent just said something which gives me a lot of confidence. I might be losing at the end. I don't know what line he's referring to. It might be this line because we're approaching the end. Oh, didn't see it was pinned. Ah, wow. So this is the very end. Yeah, I missed the... I, I initially missed the pin too, but... Um, it's kind of the nature of time trouble. It's easy to miss simple things with low time. So that was an interesting game. Now Fort Knox is one of these variations. I think it's simple to play. A lot of people as white will play either knight c3 or knight d2. And if you're lazy and you just don't want to learn theory in those lines, just bishop d7, bishop c6, and it's playable. Um, I want to explain just one thing, just one interesting nuance, is that, uh, especially with this trap early on, disable stockfish for a moment. Um, first of all, the, the main trap here, like a lot of players might think bishop g5 traps a queen. Out of curiosity, let's see how many people walked into this on Lee Chess. Wow, 152 people. Yeah, bishop g5 is just a blunder because after bishop take f3, black wins a piece. Um, and it's a nice <laughs> it's a nice trap because when white plays bishop g5, he's expecting to win the queen because the queen has no squares to move to. Um, but there's an interesting nuance if we go back to this position because black would maybe like to play the same trap right away with knight f6, knight take f6, queen take f6, bishop g5. But this line is actually good for white. And this is, uh, I think here white is winning material because the difference being the b7 pawn hangs and the rook ends up being trapped. But wait, there's queen d5. What's going on here? Is this still playable? Queen d5, 
queen c8, king e7, queen takes e7. Oh, queen d5, there's bishop e4. And this is bad for black. Um, so that's the whole reason of playing knight, knight b8 to d7 first to make sure the rook isn't getting trapped in those lines where the queen comes to f3. And then, uh, okay, then this was pleasant. Has this happened in Masters games? Oh, a few games. Bishop e2. Bishop e2 makes a lot of sense defending the pawn and making sure there's no double pawns. Also, knight g3 is a move. I think knight g3 is most logical just to keep pieces on the board because white has more space. So, interesting game. Thanks for playing. We'll have to have some kind of rematch and drafts at some point. So probably what I'll do for this stream is cut up whatever singular games that I play and then put them on YouTube. So probably just this one game with analysis will be its own YouTube video. I've been doing this recently, but for the people watching this in the future on YouTube, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the future.